So, Drew Thornton out of Lexington, Kentucky, was a drug smuggler, a cocaine smuggler, a uh, middleman out of Columbia. And he was a native Kentuckian, blue blood, part of the uh, aristocratic class in Lexington, Kentucky. So, you have um, uh, Drew Thornton, who had died in 1985, and then you had... Uh, uh, and on September, so September 11th, Drew Thornton dies, and then September 29th, Cowboy um, David Cowboy Williams dies. So David Williams dies, just not not just 18 days later. So approximately two, two, two and a half weeks after uh, Drew Thornton dies, with all that cocaine strapped to him and uh, uh, 15 million dollars. Uh, 79 pounds and 40 kilos uh, strapped on him, and uh, probably about 75 to 80 million dollars of cocaine scattered in the Tennessee and uh, Georgia forest. The Chatta, the Chattanoochee, the Chat Chattahoochee. So way down yonder in the Chattahoochee, uh, there's a lot of cocaine for random hikers. So the Chattahoochee forest um, is where is where Drew Thornton had thrown all the cocaine out on September 11th, 1985. So they found a maroon car that was parked nearby uh, where, let's see, in Cherokee County, a parachute with the straps cut was found in a residential backyard that was adjacent to a vacant field. Parachute with the straps cut. So they found um, a parachute with its straps cut. And near, close to where that parachute with its straps cut was at, uh, in a residential backyard, was adjacent to a vacant field. Neighbors remembered a maroon car that was parked nearby on the night of Drew's last jump. So, the parachute straps is probably the partner of Drew Thornton. Drew Thornton had two people. There's two people uh, in Drew Thornton's plane, I believe. I believe, I believe. I'm pretty sure of that. There's two people in Drew Thornton's plane. One jumps and dies, and the other one, the other one lives. Maybe the other one uh, seems like the other one lives, or was part of the uh, was a snitch, like David Cowboy Williams was. They, they possibly could have been snitches. This ha this case hasn't been found out. The uh, they couldn't find any guilty parties, and they couldn't. It didn't go any farther than I guess the two people that were indicted. So it's why it's a conspiracy, you know. There's a lot of people involved in high officials in state government and the Colombian government. So in Cherokee County, a parachute with the straps cut found in a residential backyard uh, north of Atlanta, Georgia. Neighbors uh, remembered a maroon car that was parked nearby on the night of his jump. So the second partner jumps and gives the $75 million worth of goods to David Cowboy Williams, David Williams, out of Boone County, Kentucky, and another Kentucky uh, person. Um, possibly out of the aristocracy, I'm not for sure, uh, out of the Masons, uh, the owner class uh, that was involved in Lexington, uh, that owned, that, that was uh, implicated a lot of Lexington aristocracy in the Drew Thornton case. So, uh, okay, so the, the car, the maroon car was traced to David Cowboy Williams. Oh yeah, and then he would take it from Tennessee uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, to the Stash House in Daytona, Florida. So they had a spot in Florida that he was going to go to. The car is traced to David Cowboy Williams, who had been a, num a member of Drew's offload crew and who was to be responsible for driving the 900 pounds of cocaine from Knoxville to the Stash House in Daytona, Florida, where it would be turned over to the Colombians' distributors. But like so many others whose paths intersected with Drew Thornton, the owner of the maroon Mercedes-Benz with vanity plates that read Sky Div, would not live long enough to provide clues. Eighteen days later, at noon, on September 29th, 1985, same year my sister was born, 1985, I think Falco come out with Amadeus also, Cowboy, David, David Williams, Cowboy, Boone County, was doing what he did every week, and he boarded himself a pilot and 15 recreational skydivers into his commercial Cessna 208 caravan. Um, his father wrote a book called Cowboy's Caravan, so that's the, he had a Cessna 208 Caravan. 
operating out of the West Wind Sport Parachute Club, a remote landing strip located three miles from the Kitchens Farm in Jenkinsburg, Georgia. Cowboy regularly ferried loads of jumpers on his $750,000 single-engine turbo prop. How did he afford three-quarter million dollar plane? So he ferried loads of jumpers. He charged the skydivers a standard rate of a dollar per thousand feet of altitude. The plane, which had been purchased by Williams four months earlier, was coveted by Williams' competitors. So admired uh, was it for its speedy climbing capability. Thousand per thousand, a uh, dollar per thousand feet of altitude. That's, that's interesting. Pay scale they pay by the altitude. David Cowboy Williams regularly took the plane to so-called jump boogies in various parts of the country, where it was the envy of everyone. On this particular Sunday, two and a half weeks after Drew's deadly jump, Williams, a Vietnam helicopter pilot and longtime associate of Drew Thornton's, the second. Intended to parachute in formation with the other jumpers when the plane reached 12,000 feet. The, the plane, Cowboy's caravan, barreled down the runway at seemingly normal speed, but was airborne, airborne only a few seconds before witnesses on the ground heard sputtering. When they looked up, sort of like the Challenger, when they looked up, they saw the expensive aircraft spir spiraling downward in an uncontrollable nosedive. All 17 people on board were killed instantly when the plane crashed into the ground. Investigators swarmed to the scene. Where, from the meadow where the plane crashed, officials held a press conference at which they announced findings almost too weird to be believed. The plane's fuel had been uh, contaminated. Someone, it seemed, had added sugar to the gas tank. The FBI's Atlanta office assigned 20 agents to investigate the suspected sabotage. Gary Scott, a Savannah pilot and former associate of Drew Thornton's, who had been convicted in connection with the DC-4 seized in Lexington five years earlier, so speculated from his jail cell about the events. Admittedly bitter at taking a fall for one of Drew's deals, there was no love lost between the two men. A lot of people were glad when Drew Thornton died, Scott said. He was kinky and greedy and known as a ripoff. In Scott's scenario, the Colombian cocaine suppliers had sabotaged Cowboy's caravan to avenge the bot's cocaine scheme. It was a classic scam, Scott said in an interview with the author shortly after Drew's death. Drew would pick up the coke in Columbia. Drew Thornton would pick up the coke in Columbia, deliver it to the distributors in the United States, and then return to Columbia short of money. He lied to the Colombian suppliers who had fronted him the coke, telling them that certain distributors had refused to pay. The Colombians would retaliate by killing the people Drew had fingered. So, according to the Scott guy, he is saying that Cowboy... Uh, uh, David Cowboy Williams was killed by the Colombian drug runners because of the bot's deal, which is one theory. That's one theory to consider. Um, he would pick up the coke to Columbia to deliver it. He would refuse to pay. Okay, Scott was not the only company insider speculating about a massive cocaine theft attempted by Drew Thornton, Cowboy Williams, and their co-conspirators. The Macon Telegraph and News reported that the caravan was sabotaged because of a sizable amount of cocaine skimmed from the shipment going to Tennessee. The thought that Colombian drug dealers would kill 16 innocent people in order to eliminate one man, Cowboy Williams, was to many people incredible. Law enforcement analysts familiar with the Colombians' more standard modus operandi discounted the, for the revenge theory. Still, other anonymous sources hypothesized to newspapers that Cowboy Williams was suspected by Drew's organization of being the snitch who was responsible for customs following Drew's plane. So, customs was following Drew's plane, even though they had, I guess they had denied it earlier, which was uh, kind of crazy. So, Customs was following Drew's plane, that's why he parachuted out, and then they said that they didn't dispatch any planes. So, was he killed? Was the aircraft, did they, did they shoot him down? And he died of a heart attack, so, um, did he, like, take too much cocaine before he jumped and blew, or did the, 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 the parachute not go out and he got scared and died of the heart attack? Um, or was there something else? Was it laced? Was he injected with something? Um, and it crashed in North Carolina, so so it seemed like he would have exited it out himself. Maybe he was pushed out. Maybe there was some operation where a person could have been on the plane uh, and then jumped off onto another plane, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what happened at the Bluegrass Conspiracy? 
Nobody knows. So the Macon Telegraph and News reported that the caravan was sabotaged because of a sizable amount of cocaine skimmed from the shipment going to Tennessee. Yeah. So they thought that the, it would be incredible. Law enforcement analysts said that the, they discount the revenge theory. Other anonymous sources hypothesized to newspapers that Cowboy Williams was suspected by Drew's organization of being the snitch. So newspapers are quoting anonymous sources about saying that. So the vengeful and cold-blooded uh, was Drew's faithful Kentucky cadre that killing 16 innocent victims would serve as a powerful message to any future Judases. So 17 people died. Conjecture in this vein did not seem far-fetched to Ralph Ross. He knew that Drew's group was capable of anything. He believed with all his heart that if Cowboy bore any responsibility whatsoever for Drew's death, then he would pay with his life. On the other hand, Ralph was puzzled by the DEA's attempts to downplay Cowboy's relationship with Drew. Why would the DEA not say that the uh, Cowboy, David Cowboy Williams and Drew Thornton were associates when they were? he was one of the main men in the operation that uh, Thornton had died in? Thornton died when he was supposed to be giving that cocaine to David Cowboy Williams, and he was supposed to take it from Knoxville, Tennessee, to Daytona, Florida. So he was uh, he was right there in the middle. He was the middleman. He was he was right there, and he could very well, being on the inside like that, have turned snitch and then got killed for it 18, 18 days later, uh, about two and a half weeks later, September um, 20, 29th, uh, 1985. Uh, so the DEA did not, they downplayed the relationship. He knew that the two men had been associated for more than a decade and that surveillance reports in the possession of the Kentucky State Police Inter Intelligence Division would prove such a connection. But neither DEA, DEA nor the FBI seemed to want to pursue those links. So uh, Cowboy's caravan had crashed because there was sugar in the tank. He was sabotaged. He was murdered. Cowboy was murdered. David Williams was murdered by somebody. Uh, possibly affiliated, most likely, I think, affiliated with Drew Thornton. Uh, Drew Thornton's are aristocratic club of rich people and other law enforcement agencies from the federal to the state uh, and anybody else, UK, law school, um, anybody else he could have been associated with um, at any point in his life. So Shirley Rebecca was mortified to learn uh, the girlfriend, uh, Rebecca, I forget her last name, was mortified to learn many months later that the two undercover DEA operatives would use her statements against her so that she unwittingly confessed every detail of the smuggling conspiracy to two undercover DEA operatives who, prior to Rebecca's statements, possessed zero knowledge about Drew's tragically thwarted mission. So Rebecca fessed up, and that's, the, that's how they know so much information about it, because the girlfriend had spoke. The girlfriend had turned, I guess, on her, but never was careless, perhaps. Cobell was as baffled, um, I guess, later on, so not, not prior. It seemed like she she seemed loyal. She seems loyal. But there's a missing guy out of the airplane, and then there's the mystery of uh, David Cowboy Williams' death. Right? Sugar in the gas tank of his Cessna 208 caravan. So Cobell, let's see, possessed zero knowledge. Cobell was as baffled as anyone. Customs denied having lost any chase planes the night of September 10th, 1984. So Customs denied that they sent any chase planes. It wasn't until April 1989 that Ralph Ross learned the details of Rebecca Sharp's statement and recognized their possible implications. Ralph thought that the report of Rebecca's story seemed too specific about the aircraft. She didn't say that the two men learned, perhaps by monitor monitoring Customs channels, that they were being chased. She said that she saw the three airplanes out the window, but Ralph's research indicated that in September 1985, only a handful of customs pilots were certified to fly a Citation jet, and that the agency was still using the Cobra, hop, the Cobra helicopter and not the Black Hawk. So, uh, only a handful. Okay, further, further. I'm not sure exactly what, what all that means. Uh, a handful of customs, only a few customs pilots were even certified to fly a Citation jet, which is probably what he was chased by, a Citation jet. Further, customs consistently maintained that they were, they were not chasing Drew Thornton. If any log reports or radio transmissions existed regarding such a chase, customs denied their existence to the DEA. Even had customs gone up, as they refer to a launch, 
It is highly improbable that Drew Thornton would have seen them out the window as they usually fly at least 200, 2,000 feet higher than the suspected aircraft. So, who killed Drew Thornton? Who killed David Williams? The Bluegrass Conspiracy carries on.